Uh, don't forget, don't forget, leave 200 likes, please. Uh, can we get this video to 200 likes? I would really much appreciate it. The more you like, the more you like my content, the bigger, the faster I'll grow, and I really would appreciate it. So again, uh, turn this back over to regular Shay. Say my name. My name is Shay Too Sweet. You call me Shay for short. And in today's video, we're going to be doing CJ the Champ. It was a viewer request. All right. So remember, if it sucks, you ask for it. Uh, links for the original creator will be down below. I'll be a residential black friend talking through the whole entire thing. Hey, look, look. I have got a black friend. Hold on. Well, now that that's over. Talking through the whole entire thing, so let's go ahead and jump into it. I know this is supposed to be a very sympathetic and serious ass video. Oh, but y'all know damn well, I am not going to gloss over the fact that this bitch is built like a Funko Pop. Like, nigga, look at her head. She has no fucking neck. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Hey, 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 back me up. No, no, no. Hey, 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 stop. Alright, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as we know, uh, there's an anime that came out recently called To Your Eternity. And you see, no, uh, for I don't me, know. it's very hard to describe this anime, but if I had to describe it, I would describe it as <clears throat> a journey of pain, sorrow, and sadness. I'm like, bro, bro, listen, listen, I ain't even gonna cap. This shit made my black ass, like, almost shed a damn tear. Like, beta bear. Whoever wrote this was on a mission to hurt everybody emotionally. Like, dog, I ain't felt like this watching the anime since I watched, like, A Silent Voice, and that was, like, three or four years ago. But, but, you know what, before I even move on any further, because this is basically gonna be, like, To Your Eternity in a nutshell, let me go ahead and give that spoiler warning real quick. If you have not watched To Your Eternity, I advise not watching this video. Hey, you can go watch it, then come back. No, nah, I don't really do sad animes like that. You can spoil the shit for me. <laughs> but I know damn well, like, some of y'all do not care about spoilers. Like, some of y'all niggas just build different. So, anyways, uh, let's cut the bullshit. So, uh, grab some popcorn, grab some, uh, tissues, because you might need them if you shed a tear and shit. Because I know some of y'all niggas' eyes probably gonna be watering and shit. Because, bro, uh, listen, listen, this is probably gonna be the most serious video I've been making in my life. So, uh, if y'all ready, let's get this shit cracking. What the fuck? All right, y'all, so we start off with a nigga sending an orb down to Earth. And you see, this just isn't an ordinary orb, no, no. No, no. You see, my nigga, this is an orb that captures the reflections of many things and changes in responses. So my nigga basically sent a sentient orb down to Earth. So the orb started off as a rock and just literally sat there for a long ass time. Like, what the fuck is a rock gonna do, nigga? <laughs> like, bro, we could dead ass make this shit a whole Discovery Channel program right now. Okay. As the rock sits there over time on the plateau of the <laughs> Earth, through the stormy nights and the rainy days of the Earth's climate, the sentient rock shows signs of life. It starts slowly over time growing moss. Look at the green luscious plant grow on his head. But over time the seasons change, and as the temperatures start to freeze, the snow begins to fall. But the rock still patiently sits there in his natural habitat. That nigga hasn't even moved a muscle yet because it's a fucking rock. But over time, a wolf appears. The wolf is wounded to the knee, and that nigga dies. Okay. But suddenly, the rock starts to change. Most bizarrely, the rock turns into a wolf as that nigga howls into the night. Okay, so boom, brother, nigga turned into a wolf and he walked up to a nigga in a damn log cabin. So homeboy right here. What the fuck? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, what? So, so if this rock went to like Detroit and turned into a crack rock, it was it what it would just basically wait on a crackhead to smoke it. Really, nigga? And then. Shay, don't think about it. Don't. He said this is his wolf, but uh, we all know that nigga's wolf is dead as hell. Dude says you were gone for two months. I knew you would never forget about me, but uh, I'm pretty sure that nigga forgot about you, bro. So the sentient orb is finally learning how to eat, but my nigga did not want that nasty ass, stink ass fish that is sitting on the fucking wall for like two months, nigga. So the boy goes to sleep and just look at the wolf, bro. He looking at that nigga like. Bro, what the f are you doing? So homie has to go on a journey and find his family and villagers that left him like five years ago. Like, if they left him five years ago, like, maybe they didn't want you. I'm petty, I'm petty, I'm petty, I'm petty. Like, I'm sorry. Like, am I not, don't make me be the asshole here. But if they left you five years ago and they nobody came to look for you, they don't want you. 
it, that should be a sign but uh, thank but you he's determined to find him like for a homie kind of down bad right now like if he don't find them niggas soon like his ass is grass because he running out of resources and everything bro like, the only people that stay with him was the old niggas and uh them old niggas dead as hell Hell. So he's all alone with this wolf right now. And just look at him, bro. You gotta feel sad for homie, bro. He writing his uncle, his auntie on the wall and shit. Like, I'll see you someday again. Like, bro. I don't feel like, sad at so all. Be wow. Really? He is his journey across the frozen wasteland. So as they begin their journey, everything seems to be going great. They're finding direction to see where they need to go and everything. They're staying warm with the campfire and shit. But then, uh, everything goes south real quick. Bro, I literally fell to the ice. <laughs> Wolf, <laughs> that nigga like, oh shit, cut! What the f just happened? So homie pulls himself out of the water and everything, but my nigga got stabbed in his ass. But, but what? And bruh is bleeding out right now. So he wraps it up, but in this time period, my nigga ain't got no disinfectants. So if he don't find help soon, uh, he's. F and look at him, bruh. This man's struggling, but this man is still determined to get to his destination. But man sees a glimmer of hope. He sees one of the directional rocks, so he runs over to it. But they got a big ass X on that bitch, and he looks over. Man, oh man, all oh, them niggas dead as hell. He dead. So bro's already bleeding out, but this shit just made it even worse, knowing that all his people didn't make it, bro. And my nigga came to the realization at this point, he's fucked. So he walks all the way back to his rusty ass shack on his last leg. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Just look at him. You know this nigga's about to kick the bucket. And look at Fushi, bro. He like, hey nigga, you good? But then bro just passed out. So in his final breaths, he just gets in his chair and he's like, hey nigga, remember me forever. Then, then, bro, he, he just kicked the fucking bucket. He dead! Okay. I feel like that little kid when that girl was just a crying and she's like, okay, like, why is it sad? I, I, I'm not, I'm not getting it. Why is it sad? I don't understand. Do not be that guy right now. You, you finally go look for the people that abandoned you. They all dead, 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 dead. Oh, God damn it. And then you like, okay, like, uh, man, fuck them niggas. They left him five years ago. Like. Bye. Man. <laughs> Bye. Bro, that, that's just a terrible way to go out. <laughs> bro, this is beyond up. This nigga died in a rocking chair in this nasty ass, dusty ass shack with these stank ass fish on the wall. And this ain't even his real wolf. But my nigga Fushi obliges his request and, bro, he like literally changed into him. What the fuck? Homie dead ass just turned into dog nigga. So he takes the form of the boy and starts walking the earth. So as he walks the earth, he dies multiple times. Well, this nigga technically is a walking corpse right now. Cause I mean, homie basically ain't got no conscience. So the nigga's basically a zombie right now. But over time, homie ends up walking into a whole new biome. But then this big ass polar bear comes out of nowhere and just- What the fuck is that? But then this big ass polar bear comes out of nowhere and just blasts his ass. Hey, but like for real, can somebody tell me why the fuck there's a polar bear in the fucking forest? Like, if you don't take your big ass back to the tundra, nigga, boy, I know your ass burning up. So then we meet this little girl named Ma. <laughs> Where did he come from? Why did he look like a porcupine? Nobody. <laughs> why does this nigga got spikes? Or is that supposed to be blood? I'm not too sure, but. How did you not hear this big, this big ass nigga behind you? Like, <laughs> this nigga's mouth is bigger than your whole body. You telling me he used stealth? Nigga, nigga, stop lying. Nigga, stop. Stop lying. Don't bullshit a bullshit Ass back to the tundra, nigga. Boy, I know your Cut ass burning up. So then we meet this little girl named March. And y'all, I am sorry. I know this is supposed to be a very sympathetic and serious ass video, but y'all know damn well 
I am not going to gloss over the fact that this bitch is built like a Funko Pop. Like, nigga, look at her head. She has no fucking neck. What is supporting that shit? Bitch built like Theodore from Elvin and the Chipmunks. Oh my God, bro. If Big Mom and Dr. Eggman got busy and had a kid. That's her, bro. But you, know, but you know what? Let me stop. Let me stop because I know this is supposed to be a very sentimental and sad ass video. So, mm -mm. so much wants to grow up and become a mother one day. And she seems very happy. But, uh... You can't forget what show we're watching here. So this girl Perona comes around and she's like, hey, little girl, uh, we need a dip. So they end up walking out the forest, but then they end up running into Hayase, the main antagonist of the show. And later on, we will understand that, uh, this bitch is batshit crazy. So they assemble everybody in the village because they have to sacrifice one of their younglings. Fuck them kids. To the big ass polar bear named Oniguma, the nigga that fucked up who shit. <laughs> Look at this nasty ass old lady touching on them. Oh my god, why is your finger in her mouth? Oh nasty ass stank ass bitch. I know she smell like funyuns. Ooh, and look at that nasty ass nose. Ooh, bitch, if you don't pluck them bitches. So they end up choosing to sacrifice March, bruh. But she don't know that yet, but everybody around her is like, congratulations, congratulations. But in their head, they're like, off. She really about to get sacrificed. Oh, and the poor parents, bro. I knew they wanted to shed a tear right there and there, but they had to keep that fucking act going on. But right when they got in the house, they started crying, bro. Then Hayase busts up in the house and deadass says, hey, little girl, you gonna die. I got the whole schedule planned out for you right here. God damn, bro. They, they really taking her away to get sacrificed, dog. So while they walking on the road, taking old Marsh to get sacrificed, this crooked ass arrow comes out of nowhere and just bangs old girl in the head. So Marsh said, fuck all this bullshit. Fuck this shit, I'm out. She just hit the dash. So she out here running away from the niggas that literally have bushes on their fucking heads. And she trips and falls and rolls like a bowling ball. So she ends up falling into the lake and uh, guess who she ran into? What the fuck? Yeah, so she runs into our boy Fushi coming back to life. And my nigga still has, like, no conscience. So he he just doesn't care. He just keeps on walking. And then Marcus knows he has to decide to follow him. So the person that shot that old crooked-ass arrow was Perona. And damn, bro, I don't know who got worse aim. Her or that one bitch that missed the whole fucking mag in a P90? Yeah, I'm still on that shit. I'm never letting that go. So March is out here trying to teach our boy Fushi how to eat. Damn, why he slapped the pear on her hand like that, bruh? Yo, that nigga started eating like a dog. And that boy kept on stealing all the pears. So she started crying and just went up in a tree and just started throwing shit at him. But she ends up befriending Fushi and she decides that she's gonna be his mom. But then Hayase finds her asses and she takes her to get sacrificed. Fuck them kids. But here comes Perona out here trying to save March from the sacrifice. And Hayase like, eh, hey, let her say, let her say, double the food for that nigga. So Perona ends up getting smacked. I woke up Chris Breezy. But our boy Fushi Damn. comes out of nowhere and then he starts boxing with the bear. Damn, bro, homie bit off his whole head. But then our boy comes back and starts biting on that nigga. Oh my he ends god. Up the big ass polar bear. So Hayase walks what? up to Perona and March and she's like, all right, listen, niggas, you motherfuckers can die right here or you can come to my land and live. So she takes him as prisoners and Fushi out here saying words now. I mean, all he can say right now is thank you. But I mean, hey, hey, it's something, bro. He got to start from somewhere. So she takes him to their home country and gives him some food. And they eating that shit up. But old girl didn't lace the food, bro. Duh. So she ended up knocking all their asses out. So she throws their asses in prison and then she just starts experimenting on Fushi's immortality. So they keep on trying to. I just. I. Okay, that's not a good free frame, but I just don't ever understand this. These people be so down to kill y'all, and then y'all be like, okay, and then right when they be nice to y'all, y'all be like, okay, yeah, bro, all this water underneath the bridge, and everybody forget that. I'm not ever understanding that with people. I never get that. This person tried to sacrifice you to a polar bear that's on 18 steroids. Are you dumb, stupid, or dumb, huh? But then, but then y'all just be like, you know what? We didn't die, so uh, we're friends now. That little girl, I understand. She little, okay? She little. But that, but her sister, stupid as hell. Little stupid bitch. We kill him over and over and over again, but you know, huh, that shit ain't gonna work. So Perona ends up planning a whole jailbreak, so she breaks all their asses out and they hit the dash. But here come Hyatt saying she trying. The block on these niggas. So Perona's out here trying to defend the wagon and she ain't doing half that. But then <sighs> So Hayase ends up drawing an arrow. So March is like, I right, I gotta do something. So she runs in and ends up getting shot by the damn arrow, bruh. He dead. Damn. God, but you didn't even have to do that. She wouldn't even got hit. Bruh, she just jumped in front of that shit.
So Fushi's like, hell no, nah, nigga, you just shot my mama, nigga. So he turns into the big ass polar bear, then just blasts her ass in Narnia. I woke up Chris Breezy. Bear then just blasts her ass in Narnia. So while March is hanging on to the little life that she has left right now, that nigga Fushi on the whole rampage. What was like, fuck y'all niggas, I'm my mama, cuz. <laughs> sadly, while Fushi is on this rampage, March passes away. Oh, God damn it. Come on, bruh. This anime, dog. So, Perona can't take it anymore. She's ready to end it all. And then they showing her Force Ghost trying to stop her and shit. Oh my god, bro. This is painful. But my nigga Fushi's like, bitch, no. And then look at old girl crazy, nasty ass. Oh, stupid ass bitch. God damn, she should have killed your ass. I don't even know how the hell she's still alive. She took a big ass paw to the face and survived that shit. So, then they bring March back to the village with the parents and everything. And then, bro, bro. This is just sad. But them motherfuckers still coming trying to chase after my nigga Fushi. So my man like, all right, listen, girl, I'm going to go ahead and skedaddle. So the man Fushi just said adios and just dipped. And he continues to roam the world. But then while he's leaving, Hayase catches up to his ass. But then Perona has a clear shot. She could kill the bitch right here. But, uh... But Y'all remember when the bitch, like, completely missed the open shot with the arrow before? Yeah, bro, uh, she whipped again. Little stupid bitch. God. Damn, I need to see a 1v1 with you and the girl from the worst rated <laughs> anime of all time to see who the f got the worst aim in anime. So Fushi takes the form of March and he meets the old lady again. And yo, what is up with niggas throwing pears in this show? Pears. So PRN teaches Fushi how to read and write. But later on at night, they end up getting attacked by these parasite monsters called the Knockers. And this dude what that comes out of fuck? nowhere that's wearing these black robes that- huh. That happened. It looks like a whole ass Sith Lord. And this motherfucker like, hey, bro, how does it feel to lose your form? These old parasite niggas can rob your shit. And we forgot the dude that looks like a whole ass Sith Lord is basically Fushi's creator. So he's like, listen, little nigga, your mission is to kill these robbing ass parasites that are robbing our shit, you feel me? So on the next arc, we meet this nigga with a helmet on his head named Gugu. And look how this nigga built with this big ass head and this beer gut, bro. So while I'm watching this, I'm thinking in my head, all right, CJ, you learned your lesson. Do not get attached to any damn character in this show because they're probably gonna kick the bucket later. Yes. <sighs> God damn it, bro. There's a reason why my nigga Gugu wears a helmet, you see. So my boy used to sell some shit on the corner at his local farmer's market, and he's living with his brother in a tent. So this rich girl that he thought was cute loses her dog. So he finds a dog and gives it to her. So she's like, thank you for your service, nigga. Now take this ring for compensation because you can get rich off this shit. So after a very successful day at the local farmer's market, that boy Gugu goes back to the tent and he realizes that his brother just left his ass. So then this guy Damn. comes around and he drops this log. So he tells Gugu, hey, nigga, you to wash this log make sure it don't fall down nowhere but while he stands there the log starts to fall and he sees the girl that he saw at the farmer's market the other day so he like hey girl get the fuck out the way but she couldn't hear shit so my nigga pushed her out the way but ended up getting nailed by the log so he ends up falling off a cliff and his face gets crushed by the log but then the old booze nigga found him patched him up and he was like hey nigga wet his mask so gugu dons the mask and he becomes a disciple of booze nigga so fushi what? and Moron meet up and fushi meets gugu and they end up becoming like brothers so then the rich girl pulls back up and my boy gugu spazzing out right now that boy like ooh, it's her the girl i got my fucking face crushed over <laughs> hey i'm sorry but i oughta let the bitch get hit by the log and gugu thinks she talking to him but bro she talking to fushi bro oh so Gugu like, why are you talking to that nigga, bruh? Motherfucker can't even form a sentence. Well, I mean, you do have like a whole ass wooden pair of on your head. But, 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 but it looks cool though. So that boy Gugu goes on a whole training arc because he's like, bro, I gotta get the girl that I sacrificed my face for. And look at my boy Fushi laughing like, <laughs> simp. But then later on, Gugu figures out that the booze nigga did something to his body. He ended up putting a whole organ in his body that contains alcohol. So he basically made my dude a whole alcohol bottle. So then the what? knockers attack again and my boy Fushi's getting fucked up. So that boy Gugu had to literally use the alcohol in his body and become a firebender. Hey, I mean, even though his body fucked up, uh, he at least putting it to work. So then years pass and my boy Gugu then glowed up, bro. Looks what like that training arc actually paid off. And I guess since Fushi hasn't died over the years, uh, his body's actually aged. And he got a new helmet. Hey, yo, the new helmet look kind of cool, though. I can't count. Nigga upgraded from a pterodactyl to a dragon. So Ren invites Fushi and Gugu to her birthday party. And she finally figured out that Gugu was that nigga that saved her all those years ago. <sighs> but right when she about to confess, we got to remember. This show was a tragedy. She gon' die. My nigga ends up falling off a cliff again. And the knockers are back ready to rob niggas again. Luckily, Gugu survives a cliff fall. So Fushi and Gugu start boxing the knockers again. And it looks like they actually having some success. Well, uh... She gonna this die. shit happens. <laughs> so 
yeah, that nigga Fushi got marked again. So then Rin comes in to save Gugu, but the whole house ends up collapsing. So while Fushi's outside getting boxed up, this man Gugu is getting crushed by debris, trying to save old girl again. Uh -uh. Let her die. It's not looking good for our boy, bruh. My man's out here pouring out all his love and shit. So, so then, so then, homie finally got the kiss, bruh. But at what cost? Your life, nigga. Because my nigga Goo Goo dead as hell. And see, oh. we could tell that homie was dead because Fushi could turn into him. That's how he firebended to beat the knocking. So then we get our little force go section. Like, damn, bruh. Right when the nigga got booty, bruh, he died. Like, shit, bruh. Let a nigga live. Death by pussy. So then at the end, this man Fushi turns into Gugu and deadass lies to old girl and says that Fushi died. And that's Gugu and he's gonna leave to go out on a journey and shit. But we, we all know, bro, like, my nigga Gugu dead, bro. Oh my gosh, bro. That's that's actually mad fucked up, dog. Like, you playing with her mind and shit. And I'm pretty sure she figured out too, bro. I, I, I kind of feel sorry for old girl now. You know what? I might have to take back when I said that the bitch could get hit by the log. Because at this point, I just feel sorry for her. So while this man Fushi's... Simp in pure distress. The old lady comes back to help my nigga out. So they end up traveling, but end up getting captured and put on a prison boat. So then we meet Tonari, bruh. And this bitch got the biggest f***ing forehead, dog, with these damn split ends. So Fushi's stuck on this island. He's trying to save Pioran. So Tonari suggests, all right, nigga, you should fight in the gladiator ring. Because if you win, you can do whatever the f*** you want to, and you can leave the goddamn island. So then the tournament begins and... Oh, my nigga got sniped. Yo, that was the announcer too. So these dudes are just running wild and just killing each other. And these people are just watching this and cheering in the crowd like, bro, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Well, I mean, they are all like prisoners, but like, damn. So then this guy thought he won, but uh, he forgot about uh, the immortal nigga in the back. So he tried to kill him, but... Uh, <laughs> That shit ain't gonna work, buddy. Motherfucker deadass tried to shove in every single weapon in man's and he didn't even go down. So yeah, bro, he just gave up. So then we figure out that these kids ain't even prisoners. They just here because their family was prisoners, so they just had to stay here on this fucked up ass island. You know, this some sad ass backstory. You know, Tonary's dad literally killed her mom. So then they get sent to the island and the dad goes batshit crazy with power and just didn't give a f about his daughter and uh, you know kind of feel bad for a little big forehead ass girl so Fushi fights in the semi-finals of this tournament arc against this old ass nigga he's putting every single weapon in Fushi bro but obviously since our boy's immortal he's eating all that shit so the old nigga was like all right bro you gonna eat all my shit now I'm gonna eat a piece of you nigga so then he just takes a whole bite out of this nigga like damn boy was you that damn hungry and he swallowed that shit Ugh! boy you nasty as hell fucking cannibal so Fushi's trying to everything to Nigga, he pulled out the wolf, he pulled out the fire bin of goo goo, but none of that shit was working. So then Fushi has a flashback of somebody talking to him, and he ends up turning into Perona. And when you first see this, you're like, oh my gosh, yes, she's back. But then five no, seconds in, you're looking at the screen, you're like, oh shit, he could turn into her off. Oh, he she dead did. as hell, bro. So then the old nigga hella down bad, bro. This nigga like, ooh, bro, she bad as hell. Can I get a sniff? Just one whiff of the coochie. Yeah. Ooh, she gets that elegant kick. But then after he wins, he's come to the realization that, yeah, bro, uh, Perona dead, bro. But how did she die? Well, uh, you see, the person that Fushi has to face in the finals is a girl that's been beating the shit out of everybody. So Mans is out here taking a nap outside, and this person in a cloak is coming to him. And, uh, guess who it is? Hey, yo, what the fuck? This nasty bitch. And, oh, what is she doing with her tongue? You nasty steak breast halitosis ass bitch. Fuck. Yeah, bro, I say stank ass is back. So she fights Fushi in the finals. And our boy's angry as shit because he's remembering that, like, yo, this is the bitch that killed March. Bro, but, like, she beat the hell out of this man. Ripping his eye out and shit. So then Fushi turns into Perona and Hayase's like, she's so light and soft and nimble, isn't she? She was my gift to you. So yeah, uh, this bitch killed Perona too, bruh. She literally busted in her house, killed her whole family, and she said, I would have felt bad for cutting her stomach. And if you take a look at her stomach, she was pregnant. <laughs> and she beheaded her ass. Yo, I told y'all at the beginning of the video that this bitch was crazy. Like, motherfucker, this ain't even Black Air Force energy. This is just psycho bitch energy. Killing a pregnant bitch? Oh my god. So then Fushi gets angry as hell and starts running. Who is she pregnant by? I'm sorry. That's, that's, I mean, she did kill a bitch, but I'm just saying, who she was pregnant by? Like, nobody, can somebody explain that part to me? Who did she give up the cootie to? I don't know. At her ass, but she put his ass to sleep again. 
yeah, uh, she became the leader of the whole island. So Hayase captures this nigga and... Dear God. So Fushi's still passed out and he's having a dream. And then Hayase's in the dream and she starts licking this nigga. What the f***? Nigga, what the hell is she doing? But her fetish is licking niggas? Yo, this bitch is nasty as hell. I know she got some stank ass breath too, bruh. Like, I know damn well back in this time period, y'all niggas did not have no damn toothbrushes or toothpaste. So there is no need for that nasty ass shit, bitch. And then she tried to bust down on that nigga. And bruh, she wanted some of that El Mortal. But Tonari comes in and cock blocks Hayase. With this big ass forehead, why is her head built like a pear right now? So they all run up on Hayase and Fushi holds her ass up. And my nigga was like, you was not getting some of this immortal rod, bitch. So they make a deal so they could leave the island. But of course, but that bitch Hayase was not having that shit. Thank you. She put my nigga Fushi to sleep again. Like, god damn, Bill Cosby? So then she <laughs> just throws him down a pit and just leaves him there. But Tonari ends up leaving the whole ass ship and going to rescue Fushi. So she rescues Fushi and they plan to leave the next day. So everything seems like it's going well, but... <sighs> Kill him. Gotta remember what we're watching here, guys. So Fushi gets alert from the Sith Lord that the knockers are attacking. So Fushi's like, all right, Tonari, take your ass on and uh get the fuck out of here. I can no. handle this shit. So no, we get back to let the me island stay. And, uh, this shit is actually happening right now. What the fuck? Yeah, bro, they're having a whole ass zombie apocalypse. So everybody's spending for their life right now. So then, of course, Tonari comes out of nowhere. She's like, nigga, I'm not leaving you because the power of friendship, bitch. And then the let whole cool side characters just pull up. Let him, let him die. Y'all niggas should have stayed on the boat. So they start fighting and everything, but old little nigga right here ends up getting infected. So the red-haired girl ends up reaching for her hand, but <sighs> here we go again. She ends up getting stabbed. A whole spear just lunging the bitch. So everybody's like, oh, fuck. Nigga, that shit just happened. So while old girl just out here bleeding out, they said, all right, fuck it. We just gonna have to leave. And big boy comes in and tries to save Fushi. So he picks his ass up and chucks his ass. But big boy ends up getting infected as well. And all three of them niggas, dead as hell. So while Tonari's escaping, this bitch Hayase literally has her sights on her. And she's like, hmm, how should I kill your ass? The face or the gut. The neck gotta make it quick. But then that boy Fushi comes in and breaks that bitch's back, bro. But then Fushi comes in the day and saves the day of the two little niggas. So the Sith Lord is like, well done, but you still got three left. And well, uh, the three left. Yeah, uh, I don't know how to f do that one, Chief. So while they out here crying and grieving because they gotta kill their three friends, this bitch comes out of nowhere, grabs old girl, and she's like, shall I kill them myself? Oh my gosh, bro, was you just getting crushed by a bear? How are you moving that fast? She knocked that little nigga out and grabbed her at the same damn time in under like two seconds. And, and they look deserve at her, she's like, die. now I'll kill those children for you. Please let me kill them, nigga. For you? <laughs> oh my god, bro, this bitch is batshit crazy. She says, I'll take on that dirty role to protect you. And she's like, don't move, nigga, or so I'm gonna throw this bitch in a burning pit. Bye. And then Tonari's like, all right, bruh, I'm gonna have to sacrifice myself for the greater good. So she jumps off with old girl and pulls her into the pit. But this man Fushi came in and saved him, bruh. And put whole crazy ass to sleep. But then, uh, yeah, they had to kill that little what? three side character. Why didn't you? But, why hey, didn't at least you? zombie apocalypse is over. So Tonari and the little nigga like, all right, bruh, we just gonna stay here on this island. But that boy Fushi does what Fushi does best and uh, that nigga just dips. But he takes old girl with him. So then he brings her out in the middle of the ocean. And he's like, all right, bitch, what the fuck is your objective? And she says, it's to be by your side. And my man Fushi's like, so you literally <laughs> killed March and Perona for that shit? And she's like, those girls tried to keep you for themselves. They tried to take you away from me. And my man Fushi like, what the fuck? Then she says, I'm in love with you. Let's not get crazy. <laughs> Hell no. You crazy ass yandere ass bitch. Bro, she on that you know Gasai type beat, bro. So this man Fushi like, hell nah, nigga, I'm out. So he makes a whole nother boat and just leaves her there in the middle of the ocean. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Hey, but at the end of this arc, Fushi taught us a very valuable lesson. Don't stick your dick in crazy. But then Fushi finds Pioran, but she's not doing so well, bro. Let even her though die. he meant to save you from death, Fushi had to learn that Father Time will catch up on your ass. So old Grandma Pioran kicked the bucket, bro. He died. Like, damn, bro, this is like the this is like the eighth or ninth death, like Jesus Christ.
So yeah, that was To Your Eternity, a journey of pain, sadness, and sorrow. But this was basically To Your Eternity in a nutshell. Hey, but it was pretty dang good though, and I already heard that they already making a season two. Hey, but uh, anyways, uh, uh goddamn, bro, this video was long as hell. But anyways, uh, uh y'all take it easy, and uh, I'm out this hoe. Hmm, what do I feel about that anime? I mean, it's okay. I mean, like, it don't seem that sad. Just because like people die doesn't make it sad. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not by I don't know. I don't like I don't like sad ass animes like this. This isn't like my cup of tea. Um I would have I would have let a lot of kids I would I would have let them kids die. Fuck them kids. And I don't understand why he he rode out in the boat and stuff like that and then just why didn't he just let the other kid die and and why she was getting pulled into that fiery lake of hell or something, but man, simps got a simp. But again, my name is Shay Too Sweet. You can call me Shay for short. Remember, remember, leave a like on this video. Uh, uh, leave a like on this video. I really will really appreciate it. And again, my name is Shay Too Sweet. You can call me Shay for short. And like my grandmother always says, so long. Say the shit, got the kingdom and you never had a place in it No man, rain with the rage of fist Fuck a train and all cause I'm a saiyan prince Goddamn, this is a royalty check If you see me ruling, avoiding this best If your life a movie, I'm spoiling